Greetings everyone, once again is Brother Mota Mwanidi, sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zulula 100, the only teacher. And here the message I will share is going to be regarding the mystery and power of faith. Because in many different eras, in different civilization, even today, many people believe in a supreme being, on, in a supreme power, on a God, a so-called God, on a divine being. So here we're going to see what is the origin of faith because many people put their faith on a God but without knowing where does the faith come from and if they should be putting their faith in a supreme being, on a God, on a certain form of belief or religion. <clears throat> because it is written in Proverbs 19.2 and this is in Biber Klatambali, the book of the truth, the only authentic Bible without any errors or contradiction. When I translate in English, it says, the lack of knowledge is not good for any spirit of man of the original race. And in Proverbs 25, 2, it is written, The manifestation of the glory of Loba is to hide things to the uninitiated whites and mixed blood. The glory of initiated kings is to probe the hidden things of the non-visible. <clears throat> so here, today, the message, it is going to be in the current classical day Bible. <clears throat> when we go in 1 John, Chapter 4, verse 1, in New International Version, you're told, Dear friend, comma, do not believe every spirit, comma, but test the spirit, the spirits, plural, to see whether they are from God, comma, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So in 1 John, John chapter 4, verse 1, you're told here, you're given a warning in the current Bible to not believe in every spirit but to test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Because many people, if someone says they are speaking on behalf of God or that they are a prophet or that they received a revelation that God told them, they're going to automatically believe. They, they're not going to they're not gonna ask questions. They're not going to hear in the Bible, it says, test the spirit. <clears throat> and why? Because many false prophets, so many people who proclaim, who, self, who are self-proclaimed, who claim to be messengers, who claim to be prophets, who claim to be from God, are false, are liars. So you can't have faith in the spirit that comes from the creator. But if that spirit doesn't come from the creator, you should not put your faith in it, in him, in that spirit. You should not believe. And you see that in many religions and even the so-called Christians, they won't ask question. They will blindly follow. They will be afraid to question what the pastor is saying. They will be afraid to question what their Bible is saying because they are afraid. But here, even the current Bible says to test the spirit. So you should ask questions. You should inquire. You should ensure that the spirit, it is in fact from God or from God according to the current classical day Bible. <clears throat> now, in Weymouth New Testament, you're told, Dear friend, come out, do not believe every spirit, but put the spirit to the test to see whether they are from God. For many false teachers have gone out into the world. So you're given a warning that there are many false teachers. Now, That's why in Act chapter 9, verse 4, you're told that's regarding the conversion of, of Saul, who then became Paul. You're told in verse 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Question mark. Verse 5, who are you, comma, Lord? Saul asked. So here you're told that Saul asked because he heard a voice and 
he inquired, who is that voice? But many people are not going to inquire, are not going to ask a question. They're going to blindly follow. So here he asked and he believed. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 22, you're told in the New International Version, by what means, question mark, the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophet, comma, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So here in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 22, you're told regarding that so-called Lord that ask a question to a spirit. But what means are you going to, because this is regarding to uh, basically seduce the king Akaz, so he fall. And that so-called Lord did not know how to do it. He was asking questions. He was asking who is going to do it? Who is going to go and seduce him? Who is going to trick the Akab, the, the king? And he asked, by what means the Lord asked when a spirit came? That's why you're told in, and then you're told, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all this prophet. A deceiving spirit in the mouth of all this prophet. This is how they are false prophets who are going to deceive, who are going to trick because they are deceived by a spirit. They are themselves seduced. They are themselves controlled by spirits, by evil spirits. Now, When we go in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 23, he says, So you see, comma, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, comma, and the Lord has pronounced disasters disaster against you. So here you're told that the so-called Lord has put a lying spirit, a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. And who is that Lord? Who is that Lord of the Bible who put lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet? The question you, ask, you have to ask yourself, can God act that way? Should God act in such a manner? To put lying spirit, to use trickery, to use deception. And that's the Lord, that's the God that many people have accepted. That's because many people are going to say God is a spirit. And they have accepted that spirit, but they did not test that spirit like it is mentioned in 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. They did not put it to the test. They didn't inquire. They didn't ask question. They didn't use discernment to see if that spirit they were worshiping, that so-called God, that so-called Lord of the Bible, if it was a good spirit, if it was a spirit from God. They accepted. They assumed. They believed in what they were told. They believed in what they read. They believed in what the pastors told them, the fake pastors out there. But when you read carefully, when you pay attention to what it says regarding that Lord of the Bible, that God of the Bible, you're told here that first he wanted to seduce, he wanted to trick the king to make him fall, to make him die. And a an spirit came out and says that he's going to be a lying, that he's going to seduce and is going to be, he says in verse 22, 
I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And that so-called Lord says, go and do it. In other versions, it will say, good. So he approves of deception, of lying. And who is the spirit that likes to lie? In Job chapter 1 verse 6, you're told, One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. And Satan also came with them. What was Satan doing in the presence of the so-called Lord? When the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. What was he doing with the other, with the angels? And why was he presenting himself in front of the Lord? Which type of scene is this? You see? In John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, New International Version, You belong to your father, comma, the devil, comma, and you want to carry out your father's desire, period. He was a murderer from the beginning, comma, not holding to the truth, comma, for there is no truth in him, period. When he lies, comma, he speaks his native language, comma, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, New Living Translation, you're told, Dear friend, comma, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit, period. So don't believe anyone who claim to have the Holy Spirit, who claim to speak on behalf of the Spirit, who claim to be a prophet, who claim to be enlightened, who claim to have the Holy Presence, or what they will call, some will call the Holy Ghost who will claim to be speaking in tongues. No. Don't believe in them. You must, here in New Living Translation, you must test them to see if the Spirit they have, they have comes from God, period. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from the Lord. Because we know that they are also evil spirits. They are spirits of deception who are going to trick people, who are going to use people. For there are many false prophets in the world. Amplify Bible. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, in bracket, speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirits to see whether they are from God, comma, because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. Test the spirit. So that means don't believe every person who claims to be a prophet. Don't believe those, don't also believe the people who are going to write the current Bibles, who are going to write the Bibles. And claim to be enlightened. Don't believe what you're going to read about what they said. Don't automatically believe it. You have to pay close attention. You have to look into the details. Into the details, in detail, to see if what they have written is according to the law. If it is according to logic. If it makes sense. You have to look through history to see... Where those religions come from? Where those faith come from? How were they spread? Because there are many people who are going to be self-proclaimed. You're going to see people who maybe were in the villages, who were working in construction and, or, or so on. And then they're going to be tired of doing that. And then one day they're going to they're gonna self-proclaim this themselves, say, oh no, I had a vision. Oh no, God told me, oh, I am a messenger. Oh, I am, I am an apostle. I had a vision. I had a revelation. I had a dream. 
and they're going to then start their ministries. They're going to open their church. Many people are going to follow them without using discernment. Without, like 1 John 4, 12 says, to, you must test them to see. You must verify. Because if it is someone that, I will use the term God here, if it is someone that God has sent, everything the person says must be logical, must be accurate, must be historically correct. And even according to the scriptures. But you see, first of all, those Bibles, the current Bibles, are full of lies, mistakes, contradictions. I've already shared many of those contradictions. And many people blindly going to say, no, it's the word of God. Don't question it. Don't ask questions. No, you, you have to have the Holy Spirit to understand. And then they, they are going to come up with their own understanding, with their own way of seeing to try to defend those contradictions. When they themselves didn't write those, those were written in the Middle Ages by people who lacked knowledge. And they're going to now defend those heresies. They're going to defend, defend those Bibles. Claim, no, the Bible is the Word of God. But when you read it, there's contradiction. So the Word of God contradicts itself. The Word of God is, should be the truth. And in the truth, they shouldn't, there's no lies. There's no contradiction. There's no mistakes. So if there are mistakes, then it is not the Word of God. Aramaic Bible in plain English. Beloved, comma, do not believe all spirits, comma, but be distinguishing between the spirits, whether they are from God, comma. You're told here to be distinguishing. So you have to distinguish between the, the, the spirit from God and the others, because there's a separation between the occult world and those from God. You see? But when you read the Bible, in one verse they're going to tell you, no, it is God who, who pushed David to do the census of the people. And then in another verse, you're going you're gonna to be told that no, it is Satan that pushed David to do the census. You see? The confusion. And people are not going to distinguish. They're going to say, no, God acts in some ways. He, he uses Satan. So, you see? Because they cannot distinguish between Satan and the so-called God. They cannot distinguish. They cannot make this distinction of this, the evil spirits where they are the lies, the contradiction in the Bibles, where the mistakes, where man has put their own ideas in those texts, has falsified history and the scriptures. Literal standard version. Beloved, comma, do not believe every spirit, but prove the spirits, comma. Prove the spirits. So they have to prove. You have to prove the spirit. You have to, it has to be demonstrated. In the current Bible, you're told regarding Paul of Paul, how when he was preaching, the Christians, the so-called Christian of Berea, they were verifying to see if what he was saying was according to the scriptures, according to the text. But many people don't, don't verify, don't like to read, just listen and say, they like to say amen, want to what the pastor says, amen, amen, without even knowing what amen is. For your information, amen is the name of a false god in ancient Egypt. You see? So they don't like to research. They don't know history. They're going to repeat things they don't even understand. Use words they don't even know the definition of. 
1 Kings chapter 22, verse 21. A spirit came forward, stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. Period. By what, by what mean? Asked the Lord. So the Lord is asking by what means? How? How can God ask how you're going to do something? So that means he doesn't know how you're going to do it. So that's the proof that that Lord is not all knowing. You see? Because men who have written those texts were limited. So when they wrote it, they didn't understand they were limiting that their so-called God. And many people are going to read and they're not going to see that limitation. They're not going to see the lie. They're not going to see the contradiction. And then at the same time, they're going to say, no, God is all-knowing. So which one is it? If God is all-knowing, then he should not ask by what means. He should not ask who is going, how you're going to do it, how you're going to do something. He should not be surprised. He should not be regretting. He should not repent. You see? You have to use logic. Now, and in other versions, that spirit that came forward was a spirit that inspires the prophet. The prophets. You see today, all those church, churches, they're going to claim to have the Holy Spirit, but the teachings they're, they're giving are in contradiction with, with one another. They're not even all in agreement. One, what one pastor is going to say, another fake pastor is in another church, is going to contradict that. But they're both going to claim to have the Holy Spirit. They're both going to claim the Bible is the Word of God. They're both going to claim, oh, they have accepted that so-called fake Jesus. They're going to claim they're in the truth. They're going to claim to be messengers. And many people are going to accept. And they're not going to see what's wrong with that. They're not going to see the confusion. And many people, when you're going to share the, share the confusion, reveal the confusion, teach them the truth, they will persist willingly in the acception in the acceptation of those lies. Now, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not being seen. So, faith is the assurance, assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not being seen. That's the faith. King James Bible. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Not seen. So, faith is basically you believe without seeing. But you're convinced internally. You have the assurance. You have the faith. Now, where does that faith come from? Because many people, there are many faiths out there. Many people are going to say, no, it's the faith that save. But where does the faith come from? How is the faith born? Amplified Bible, now faith is the assurance, title, deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as act what cannot be experienced by physical senses. New Heart English Bible. Now faith is being confident, confident of what we hope for. Convinced about things we do not see. So believing and knowing is different. If you believe and you know, is different. There is knowing, there is seeing, seeing, and then there is believing. If you are told regarding 
a so-called prophet in the past, you haven't seen that prophet. You're being told and you're, st you're starting to believe what you're being told. That's the faith. That's believing. But if you are, if you saw, if you are present, that's knowing. So where does, does the faith come from? And is it only the faith that saves? When we go in James chapter 2, verse 19, New Living Translation. You say you have faith, comma, for you believe that there is one God, period. So many people believe that there is one God. Many people believe they have the faith. And many, some are going to think that's enough and that's going to save them. Good for you. Even the demons believe this. You see? You're told here that even the demons, and demons are evil spirits. Even the demons believe this. So even the demons believe that there is one God. And they tremble in terror. Now, for you out there who claim only faith save, only believing save, that if you believe, there's some going to claim, no, if you believe in Jesus, you're saved. Well, you're told here that the demons believe in God. Does that mean the demons are saved? The demons believe in God because they have not seen God. God. They did not see God. And for your information, the first man who is known in the current Bible as Adam, but his true name is Moto, did the did not need faith because he knew, because he was created. It is way after that the people needed faith because they were told the stories, they were told what happened, and then they had to believe. Now, many people, they grow up, they are told things either in school, at home, by their parent, by society, by their friends, and they're gonna are they gonna read a book and then they're gonna believe in what the book said. And that's where the faith began. But if the source, if what you are told, if there are contradiction in them, if it is the lie, if there are errors, mistake, contradiction. And you're putting your faith in those lies, in those contradictions. You accept those lies. You start believing in them. That means your faith is based on a lie. And that faith based on a lie cannot save you. How faith comes. How does faith come from? So first you were taught while maybe little. Because... For you to believe in a God, you have to be told. You were told regarding a, a so-called divine being by a so-called God. You learn, you read, then you accept. That's the belief. Once you accept, that's the belief. And that's when the faith, the faith began. That's when the faith is born. So the first the first step, you have to be taught. So someone has to teach you. So, and how does that teaching, teaching come from? It comes from the word. So you are told word, you are, it is either spoken or written, but nevertheless, it is a teaching. And that's the word. Then, so first is the teaching. Then, believing. So you hear those words, you read those words, you were told by your parents, by society, by the church, by the so-called pastor, the so-called, they are, they, currently they have the so-called um, Jehovah Witnesses who go home to home to, to, some, to some places, knock on doors, and try to preach what they will call their, their, their so-called gospel and so on. You see? So that's the teaching. And then there's the belief. The belief. 
So you accept, if you accept, then, so that's the second, that's the second step, acceptation. Then is the faith. The faith is born. Once you accept, then it is the faith. Like there is the spirit, the body, and the soul, three dimension. So even the demons, they were told regarding God. But the angels, they, they knew because they were created in the spiritual plane. Now, some prophets, some messenger, messengers, they knew from the womb. They knew from the day they were born. Even from inside their mother's womb, they knew because they had the revelation, because they learned from the Holy Spirit, because they had their, the Holy Spirit from their conception. So from uh, the womb and uh, from their birth. Now, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 7, you're told. Before that, I go in Job, Job chapter 42, verse 5. New International Version. My ears had heard of you, but now my, my eyes have seen you. You see? My ears have heard of you. So that's the faith that you have, have had heard. So that's first the teaching, the word, and then he believed, and then that's the faith. But now my eyes have seen you, that's knowing. Because faith, once again, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see? And once you see, that's knowing. Now, In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who approaches Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So you're told here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, in the current Bible, that faith, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, which faith? It has to be the correct faith. It has to be the faith based in the truth. On the correct teachings. On the teachings from His Word. From the teachings from His Holy Spirit. Now, In Hebrew chapter 11, verse 7, New International Version, you're told, By faith, Noah, comma, when warned about things not yet seen, comma, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family, period. By his faith, he condemned the, word, the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. So, here you're told in Hebrew 11, 7, that it is by faith, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. So he had the faith. Now, Roman, Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 17. Roman 10, 17. Consequently, this is in the New International Version. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, comma. So faith comes from hearing the message. That's the first step. You have to hear, you have to be taught, you have to receive the teaching. And the message is heard through 
here you told and the message you heard is heard through the word about Christ. New Living Translation. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Berean Literal Bible. So faith is from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. King James Bible. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. New King James Version. So then faith comes by hearing, comma, and hearing by the word of God. So it is not the word of Christ. Those are wrong versions. All those versions are fake, but you have to understand that faith comes from what we hear. And you're told, and hearing by the word of God. So according to the current Bible, what, what we have to hear, it is by the word of God. should be according to the word of God. Not according to your own, or your own understanding. Not according to your fake pastor. Not according to what the current Bible will say. Those who have written those texts will say, no. But how are you going to be taught the, the word of God? Because God doesn't speak directly to, to people or to human beings. It is through his messengers. Or through his messengers, yes. And also it can be through the scriptures. by And those scriptures who have been written by those who were mandated to do so. And in those texts, there shouldn't be any contradiction or errors. Now, in John 7, verse 16, My teaching is not my own. This is Christ's answer. My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. You see? New Living Translation. So Christ told them, My message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. So you're told that... Uh, so that Christ was sent. John 14, verse 24. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Period. Are not my own. Are not my own. So if the so-called Christ is God himself, then the word he's saying are from him. But he says here, the word you hear are not my own, are not his. So the version will say that no, so faith come by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. That's a, that's a fake version. And those who claim that no Christ is God, that there is the notion of the Trinity, already that, that contradict what even those Korean Bible says. So people are taught by books and you put your faith in those words. Now let's examine those texts, those books on which you have put your faith in, on which many people have accepted and put their faith in and believed. Because if you put your faith in those books, in those texts, then we know that the faith should be based on the Word of God. And the Word of God cannot contradict itself. So let's examine it to see if the Bibles, the current Bibles, are the Word of God. Some people are going to claim that no, it is the Bible. Other people are going to claim no, it's another book that is the Word of God. No. Completely false. No books is the Word of God. Because even according to the current Bible, you're told that no, it is the Word of God who made all things, who created. It is through the Word of God that creation was made. Then how can then the word of God be contained in a book? Now, 
Now, for those who believe the Bible is the word of God, we go in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. You're told. By faith, Moses left Egypt, comma, not fearing the king's anger, semicolon, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible, period. So here you're told that he saw him, but you're told by faith Moses left Egypt, that he was by faith, comma, not fearing the king's anger, not fearing the king's anger. Contemporary English version, because of his faith, comma, Moses left Egypt, period. Moses had seen the invisible God and wasn't afraid of the king's anger, period. So here you're told that Moses wasn't afraid, that he left by faith, that he wasn't afraid of the king. So if you accept this version, if you accept Hebrew 11 verse 27, you're going to say, but no, you see, Moses wasn't afraid. He left Egypt by faith without fear. So you had faith that Moses had faith and left Egypt without fear. Now, let's see if the faith you have put in that story, in that comprehension, in that passage is in agreement with another passage in the same book. Exodus chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. You're told, this is regarding the rejection and flight of Moses. So this is that story. Because when he says Moses had, this is in Hebrews, that by faith Moses left Egypt. So that happened somewhere in those current Bibles. So let's read in Exodus what he says. Exodus chapter 2, verse 14. But the man replied, comma, Before that, let me read verse 13. The next day, Moses went out and saw two Hebrews fighting, period. He asked the one in the wrong, Why are you attacking your companion? Verse 14. But the man replied, Who made you the ruler and judge over us? Question mark. Are you planning to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Question mark. So he asked. Then Moses was afraid And taught, this thing I have done has surely become known. You see? Then Moses was afraid. So here you're told that Moses was afraid. Because he killed an Egyptian. And that that so-called Hebrew knew that. And when he revealed that he knew. Who made you judge Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you planning to kill me as you kill the Egyptian? When he heard that, then Moses was afraid. He became afraid because he was, he says, this thing I have done is surely become known. Verse 15, when Pharaoh heard about this matter, matter, comma, he sought to kill Moses, period. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and settled in the land of Media, comma, where he sat down beside the well, beside a well. So you're told that Moses was afraid that that story was known, that what he had done was known, and Pharaoh heard about that, about the matter, and sought to kill him, and Moses fled. So he was afraid. He says, then Moses was afraid. But when you go in Hebrews, verse 11, verse 27, by faith Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. Is either Moses was afraid and fled, or he wasn't afraid. Which one is it? If you put your faith in he wasn't afraid, that means you're rejecting Exodus 2, verse 14 to 15. So if you're rejecting one passage of the same book, 
and you're claiming is the word of God, I mean you're rejecting the word of God, or the word of God contradict itself. You see that you have put your faith in contradictions, in lies, in things that don't make sense. Those people who, are, who have written those, first, it's not one person who has written all those texts. They took many different texts, put it together. That's what a Bible is. It's many texts put together. It's a library. And there, are, there is confusion. So what is your faith based on? In, on Hebrew 11 verse 27 or on e Exodus chapter 2 verse 14? If you claim it doesn't matter that only faith count, where your faith is in vain because faith comes from what you heard. Faith comes from what you were taught. Faith comes from what you're reading. And if what you're reading, you're saying what you're reading is, doesn't matter or the belief, the teachings doesn't matter, then your faith is in vain then your faith is based on what? What are you basing your faith on? Exodus chapter 2 verse 14, New King James Version. Then he said, Who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. You see? Contradiction errors. If your faith is based on contradiction you cannot please God. You cannot be pleasant to God because your faith is based on a lie. So your faith is not based on his word. And you were told that to be pleasant to him, it is by faith. Those, those without faith cannot be pleasant to him. You see? Exodus 2 verse 15, English Standard Version. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses, period. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Media. And he sat down by a well. That's verse 15. So he fled. He was afraid for his life. He fled. Now, all of you out there who you did not see that scene, you were taught, you read, you did not assist the creation of the world. You didn't see the other side. Zulula 100 is the only teacher and he came to enlighten us. To enlighten the spirit of men. So, once again, first is the teaching. And that teaching has to be based on the truth. Has to be the truth. Has to be logical. Has to not have contradiction. Has to be current, coherent, coherent. Has to be truthful, logical, historically accurate. You see, you have to analyze, you have to research, you have to read, discern. And the second part is believe. Because you see that it's logical, it makes sense, it's in a group, even because even the nature teaches us. Because the law are even in nature, in the universe. Then believe, but not any type of belief, the belief based on the truth. Then that's when the faith is born, the faith based on the truth, the true faith. Not the, the, faith, the, the faith of the fake pastors of, of the religions, the so-called religions, based on 
text on the Bible is full of lies and contradiction, no? So if the teaching is full of lies, contradiction, and you believe in those lies, you believe and you believe that you are in the truth, and you notice that some things don't add up in your belief, in those texts you have accepted, in those teachings you have accepted, you'll see those contradictions, those errors, those mistakes, those things that are not logical, that don't add up. But you're going to persist because you'll claim, no, I was healed. Some are going to claim, no, my mom was healed. I had a miracle. A miracle happened to me. You see? Some are going to claim, no, they, they were healed. They had a miracle. They, you see? No, they speak, they speak in tongues. Some are going to claim, no, the name, the name Jesus saved. They're going to say, no, the name Jesus saved me. You see? I'm going to say those things. I'm going to say, no, the name, Jesus, the name of Jesus saved them, saved you. But, and because of those type of arguments, those type of belief, they're going to persist in the lies. Even when they see those contradictions, many people are going to continue because of those sensations. Because even when you see, uh, even in the so-called India, they also have their belief there. They have many gods, and some of them in the they will in their practice they will go in some sort of trance. They will be like believe they're gonna think no, it is the truth. But all those are sensations. You shouldn't base your faith on fake sensations like that. So, many people underestimate Satan. Here we are not glorifying him, but Many people don't understand. They're going to claim no, they, that they have won, that they are saved, and they underestimate Satan. They underestimate the adversary. But when you read in the scriptures that the archangel Michael, when he was... Um, contesting with Satan but simply said this is in Jude chapter 1 verse 9 even Michael the chief angel didn't dare to insult the devil when the two of them were arguing about the body of Moses all Michael said was the Lord will punish you you see even Michael the chief angel didn't dare to insult the devil But many people, they will come, they will insult. They will insult. And they're going to claim to be in the truth. They're going to claim to have the Holy Spirit. They're going to claim Jesus saved them. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31, you're told, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. Verse 32, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your 
brothers. You see, some people are going to claim, no, I bound you, Satan, I chase you. I chase you in desert places. But because they don't understand, they are in confusion, in delusion. Now, The true faith is born on the truth, on the true teachings. And to receive the true teachings, you have to be taught by the true teacher, by a true messenger, by so that's the good teaching, the good news. And the good news, the only teacher mandated is Zurula 100. And we have Biber Katambale, the authentic Bible, the only Bible in the world without any errors or contradiction. You can read, research, and see there is no mistakes no errors no lies so if you base your faith on the truth on the true text on the true teachers on the tr on the true teacher on the true message the good news the good teachings then that's when your faith will have value, will be solid. But if you base your faith on lies, on contradiction, on confusion, and you don't want to think, you don't want to use logic, you don't want to use reason, you don't want to research, you want to act like you're not hearing, like it doesn't matter, then your faith is in vain, serve no purpose, is the wrong fate. There's only one creator and is Lupa, the only and unique creator. There's only one messenger in our time, Zulula 100, one authentic Bible, Biber Katambale. That's the message, that's the truth. All glory be to Luba, the only and unique creator.